Hello and welcome to this Cantabile 3 walkthrough. Today I'm going to be talking about ports and routes. Ports and routes are used to create audio and MIDI connections. You can think of a port as like a socket on a hardware device, or routes are like cables that connect ports together. So let's start by inserting a uh, simple piano plugin. Now you'll see here in Cantabile's uh, main view here, each of these objects has an expandable panel that show the connections coming out of this uh, particular object. Now at the moment there are none created, but uh, let's start by adding a route from the on-screen keyboard, which is this device down here, so you'll be able to see what I'm playing. And I'm going to connect it to the piano's MIDI input port. Okay, if I was to play some notes now on this keyboard, you'll see a few things happening. First of all, these uh, indicators here are lighting up. Uh, the first one means that this route is receiving MIDI input, uh, and the second one indicates that it's sending it. Um, sometimes routes can be used to filter events out, so you would see uh, MIDI arriving but not being sent. Um, down on this plugin slot, you can see the uh, plugin's MIDI input uh, activity indicator lighting up, and these level meters indicate that it's generating sound. So we can't hear this yet because we haven't actually connected it to anything. So I'm going to connect this uh, stereo output port to the main speakers. And now if I play a sound, we can hear it. Okay, um, that, that's basic uh, MIDI route uh, and an audio route. Uh, these things have some uh, common settings. So the, this enabled switch here lets you turn routes on and off. These are used uh, often in combination with states, which I'll cover uh, in another video and they let you dynamically switch routes on and off um, as you're um, using Contabile. Um, I'm going to insert another plugin now just to show uh, audio uh, effect routing. So I'm just going to insert an uh, effect plugin and I'm going to connect its stereo out to uh, main speakers and then I'm going to redirect the output from this plugin, the piano plugin, to the effect. So now if I play you can hear that effect on uh, the sound. You can see the signal coming uh, out through the stereo port connected to the effect, and then the stereo's output connected to the speakers. Now, each of these objects, um, well, certainly the, the plugins anyway, have a configurable set of ports. Right? So you can actually create your own new ports on here and then map the port channels onto the actual channels exported by the plugin. These uh, default ports that were created, Cantabile creates based on how many channels the plugin has and some information that the plugin, um, most plugins export to say how they should be wired up. You'll notice on um, the uh, output port, there's a, a number of different mappings here. You'll see that um, the output uh, for this particular channel is mapped to both the plugin output and the plugin input. This is to set up uh, wet dry mixing. Um, so if you come back here and have a look, there's this wet dry mix slider here, so if I was to turn this right down to dry, there's no um, effect on that. If I was to turn it up partially, there's a partial effect, and all the way up for the full effect. Okay, so um, plugins don't support configurable uh, MIDI ports, uh, simply because there's always only just one. Um, but the audio ports can be configured, and depending on the plugin, there, there could be quite a lot of channels and ports here. Okay. Um, the audio effects are fairly simple. You just have this on-off switch, and you have a uh, gain setting to dial these down, so you can control uh, how much signal. You can actually can create multiple um, uh, connections out of any plugin. So you can actually peel off part of the signal, send it somewhere, and then forward it on from there. Um, that's it for audio routes. They're very simple. Uh, MIDI routes are a bit more complicated because we can actually manipulate and filter on the data that's coming through. So to show that, I'm just going to uh, get rid of that um, effect and just insert another instrument, uh, saxophone. Um, I'm going to connect both of these to the speakers so we can hear them. And I'm going to create another route from the same input uh, device, the on-screen keyboard, and connect it to the saxophone this time. So now we've got um, 
the on-screen keyboard, um, all events, uh, all channels, being mapped to two different plugins. So this is basically what would be called a layered sound. So if I was to play this now, we can hear both the piano and the saxophone. Okay, that's a layered sound. The other way you might want to set this up is um, based on uh, channel. Um, so if I was to change this so that channel 1 uh, goes to the piano and channel 2 goes to the saxophone, you can see I've got the on-screen keyboard at the moment set to channel 1, so I should hear the piano. If I was to change this to send on channel 2, saxophone. Okay, so that's uh, channel-based uh, routing. Um, the other way we can do this is um, as a keyboard split. So if I was to change this one back to channel 1 um, and set up a split here. So I've got learn mode turned on. So if I, if I put the focus in here on the highest note and set the highest note to B3, and on the other one I'm going to set the lowest note to C4. So as you can see now we've got two routes. Um, channel 1, everything up to B3 goes to the piano, and channel 1, everything C4 and above goes to the saxophone. So if I play down here, piano, and if I play up here, saxophone. Okay, so that's a basic keyboard split. Now you can actually create as many of these routes as you like. You can actually even put uh, transpose settings on them, so you can um, automatically generate chords and so forth. Um, it's really quite flexible what you can do with that. Um, the other thing you can do on a, a MIDI route is what's called MIDI filters. Um, these let you set up things like uh, velocity curves, um, various controller, channel mapping, channel selection, you can suppress certain events, um, etc. There's a whole range of things that you can uh, do with that. I'm not going to cover them now. They can be in a video all of their own. Okay, um, now, the I, I showed how um, each of these uh, plugins has a set of ports that you can configure. Um, the ports here on the input, you'll see that there's uh, three devices here, a main keyboard, an on-screen keyboard, and a main microphone. These two are MIDI, route, uh, MIDI ports. This one is an audio port. Um, and the same on the output. You can see that we've got um, two output ports here. Um, there is actually also a um, MIDI output port. So if I was to add a MIDI uh, route here, you can see that I can actually also send this to um, an external synth. I can even send uh, MIDI to the on-screen keyboard and it will light up to show the MIDI events coming uh, through that route. I'll just delete that for now. Okay, so um, th these are uh, what are called environment ports and they're configured in options. So if you were to go into options here, you'll see we've got uh, two pages of settings here to do with audio and MIDI ports. And this is where you uh, create your uh, ports and map them onto your physical hardware. So the idea behind this is to insulate your songs from the physical hardware that you're running on. Um, if you have a lot of songs and you hardwired them all to a particular device and then you had to replace that device, it would be quite tedious to have to go through and fix them all up. So the idea behind these ports is you create um, properly named devices um, and then map them onto um, your physical hardware. So for example, say you had a... Um, a guitar mapped onto one channel, you might create a mono input port, let's just call it guitar, and you can choose in here what uh, port you would, what, what channel on the device you would map that to. I've got nothing here selected at the moment because of the way I've got this machine configured to record the video, but um, normally there would be a list of uh, channels here that you can choose from. These channels can be mapped either just by right clicking if you just want to do a one to one mapping. Or if you double click on them, you can actually create quite complex mappings here with different gain settings. So you might say, okay, this channel I actually want to go to multiple ports. So you could, uh, multiple channels, sorry. So you could create uh, those types of mappings here. Okay. Um, that's, uh, I'll just get rid of that again. So that's uh, the audio ports. The MIDI ports are very similar. Um, same sort of deal. You have a, um, keyboard name. You can also filter these based on uh, channel. So the, the idea here is, uh, say you have a couple of keyboards uh, daisy chained together and then connected to a device uh, on your computer, um, you could actually separate them out if they were sending on different channels. 
Um, so you could actually separate those two keyboards out to different ports, which you can then use in your song, um, and then remap as you need to later. Um, the other reason for these um, for using these ports is you might have uh, different configurations for um, at home versus uh, wherever you practice versus where you might be performing. Um, so as long as you've got the same ports configured in each configuration, um, your songs will work without having to uh, modify them. Uh, now sometimes you will want to rename one of these ports. Um, say for example you wanted to rename this um, from main keyboard to I don't know, upper keyboard. Um, if you've got a lot of songs already referencing the name main keyboard, um, it would be tedious to have to go through and fix all them up. So what you can do is put in a alias name here, and whenever that song is loaded, or whenever any song is loaded that uses uh, this name, it'll be automatically updated to uh, the new name. And then if you save the song, it'll be saved away like that um, for the future. Um, MIDI ports also have MIDI filters, um, same sort of thing. You can set up a velocity curve to tweak the way a particular keyboard works, for example, map channels, all that sort of stuff. Okay, um, the one other thing in here is uh, the metronome port. This is a special port that um, all the metronome sounds are sent to. Um, it's just a mono port, but you can map this to um, whatever you want on your uh, sound card. So um, you can send this to your drummer's headpiece or whatever to uh, to get it wherever you need it. Okay. Um, and finally in here, um, audio ports and MIDI ports, there's a default. So um, for the MIDI input, you can have a... Actually, I won't do it on that one. I'll do it on the on-screen keyboard. You can say uh, this is the default um, MIDI input device, and any new plugins that you load will automatically be wired up to this. And the same on the audio, but on the output side. So you can say this is the default uh, output. So if I go back to my song now, I'm just going to discard this one. So th these routes here, um, I had the ports, I, I deliberately had no um, default port set up so that I could show this quite explicitly how these routes are set up. But now if I create a new song and just add a plugin, oops, same one. You'll see it's automatically created the on screen keyboard route and the stereo out route. So I can just play. Okay, I think that covers um, certainly the basics of MIDI and audio port routing. Um, there's a few more details in um, certainly in the MIDI stuff. You, there's some program routing and condition routing. I'm not going to cover them now because they're not really used that often, but um, they're there if you want to experiment with them. Um, that's about it. If you'd like to try Cantabile, you can head over to cantabilesoftware.com. Um, there's a free trial there. There's even a free edition that you can uh, use and play with. Um, and that's about it. Thanks for watching.